we think in Excel spreadsheets. We want to see the calculation. And, and, and it's one thing to go, well, we're wasting time in meetings. And you go, yeah, yeah, wh whatever, whatever. It's another thing when I go, hey, Chris, <laughs> here's 60,000 hours, you know, $5 million you spent in these meetings. Right. Yeah. And then you go, oh, okay, no more 60 minutes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Everybody does it in eight minutes or less. And so we've started to build a tool around that. And, and you had already really started down that path. And now we're just helping apply some of our IP to it. What is it called again? It's worth meeting. Worth meeting, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's an Outlook plugin. It is. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about what it is right now, and then we can talk a little bit more about how sure. we're developing it out. We built it for our internal use, right? Because we have consultants and, and different people, project managers on meetings, and it's a lot of meetings. So you want to quantify that cost. It's the difference between I feel like we have a lot of meetings or I know meetings are costing us, like you said, yeah. this, this amount of money. a dollar figure to it. Yeah. yeah. So we started with that messaging uh, last year at our, our annual meeting. And just telling them, you know, this is what it costs. This is what it costs us. Be mindful, that kind of thing. And then we got to thinking, because we're all software engineers, <laughs> we could build a thing. So we- How do you automate it? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. We don't want people with a calculator calculating yeah, every sure, meeting, right? right? So um, we built a proof of concept. It's, it's where it is today. We use it internally for all of our, our meetings. Um, and it calculates the internal cost of your meeting. What is it? Is it worth meeting, right? So- it's pretty self-explanatory. That's where we are. That yeah, way, I mean, right? it's, that's the that's the question you're answering. Are, are you seeing any benefit from it just yet? Like, I, I know, just one example yeah. is the the time of meeting. So, you know, Outlook by default, you got a half an hour or an hour, or so you got an hour meeting on there. So we're we're looking internally at like cutting that hour meeting down to forty minutes. You know, what what is a thirty minute meeting go down to twenty minutes? And every meeting that we have with the developers, the developers are the key staff and they're, they're very expensive talent. So uh, we, we want to make sure we control that as much as possible. It makes so much sense. And I think you are right. There's simple things you can do. Um, you know, we, we just recently were, were doing an analysis for a company and we, we found out they could take seven minutes off every one of their meetings. It was like hiring two, 10 full new full-time employees just if they could just shut seven minutes off every meeting that might be possible it might not but i will tell you parkinson's law says that work always expands to fit the time allotted i didn't for know it. what it was yeah. called yeah. I, parkinson's I law, yeah. there you go Park, yeah. he had he had two really good ones park that was one and the other one's called bike shedding uh so we're gonna get off on a little tangent here because <laughs> parkinson's. i love i love him from the 50s he only he only ever wrote two little books that were like these tiny little they look like religious tracks, you okay, know, yeah. which is sort of a good way to do it. If you're just trying to make a point, it's like, let me share the religion of time management with you. But his other one was called bike shedding. It was really interesting. He went and observed a, I think it was a nuclear power plant that was being built in Europe. And they just couldn't figure out why there were all these delays and bureaucracy and everybody had all these excuses. And he went and he sat through a number of the meetings and he found that they spent about 80% of their time trying to determine how many people would ride bikes to work and how many bike um, stalls they needed to put out front for people. And, and what, he, what the point was is that g when left to their own devices without an agenda, you will focus on the most trivial, meaningless shit because you feel like you have control over it. The hard stuff you will punt as long and as far away from yourself as, as long you as can. You're left I mean, don't we all do this? Yeah. When, when, when Sink says, I need it Friday at five o'clock, <laughs> About 445, you're like, I better start writing some code on this. It's done at five, though. It's done at five. It's done at five. <laughs> and there, there's a method to that, right? Uh, but but yes, really understanding that, that time will expand to fit. Work will expand to fit the time allotted for it. When you got to cut to the chase, you got to cut to the chase. And there is time talked about this on an earlier call and I, or on an earlier podcast. And I think it really affects even the things that we're talking about. We've, we've recently came up with some content that says there's only four types of meetings in organizations. And we've now analyzed probably a million meetings, um, you know, hundreds of thousands at least. And, and we found some very interesting trends. There's really only four purposes to meet. There is a decision meeting. We're making a decision. There's an education meeting. We're being educated. We're learning something new. There is a design uh, build meeting. Uh, you, that is you bringing your code, I bringing my user interface, you bringing the idea. Yeah. We all get together and we go, how do our pieces fit together? And we work those things out. Then there's a fourth category called the inform meeting. And the interesting trend that you find in it is this. When you look through these big CSV files of Outlook things, you put the words catching up in there and you start to find 
tens of thousands of these meetings where this word catching up is in there. Mm. And it dawned on me one evening that if I'm deciding, if I'm designing, if I'm building and creating, I'm moving the organization forward. Yeah. If I am catching you up, by nature, that means you have fallen behind yeah. <laughs> and I have to stop to catch you up. So is that a progress meeting? Absolutely not. It's the worst kind of meeting possible. So now we've started to say to our clients, if you've got it in that first three categories, do it. Maybe add an extra 10 minutes each one of those because that's good shit. Yeah. Like that's going to make you money. These other meetings, we need to make war against them. We need, we need to put the, the face paint on and sharpen the ax and say, we're going to get out there and we're just going to hack these things away. And that's the kind of meeting that's really dangerous because everybody's trying to get on the same page, which, which is odd because we have Slack and we have Teams and we have you know, all of these Trello and all of these tools that you would think would be catching us up as we were going. But for some reason, we still have to have a freaking meeting. Oh, yeah. It. yeah. it just doesn't make any sense. So those are the meetings that are really dangerous, I think, to most companies. Yeah, and those, you're looking at what already happened. So catching They're people up may mean changing what you've already done. You're not going forward, and you might be going backwards. Yeah. You might be. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the process fix to help you see the bigger picture. Derek names is the elixir, cut and waste away like scissor. Woo! Got a problem, he can solve it. He's an expert with the process. So for sure you'll see a profit, bottom line profit. Analyze the work your people doing every day. Expose the inefficiencies getting in the way. Advise you how to automate, outsource, abbreviate, eliminate, innovate. Now there's more food up on your dinner plate.